Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Vince Ryder, and I have no idea what's happening outside of my neighborhood. It's just that ev almost anything is like people just love making noise. There's always a concert in the middle of this cul-de-sac, and there's always like I don't know. Life here in in the Bay Area is is pretty crazy, but you know, um, if you hear anything, that ain't me. That's <laughs> that's my neighborhood going crazy out there. But yeah, let's talk about some more miraculous ladybug. And this one is about episode three of season four, Gang of Secrets. Other people already talked about it. Other people have like better, you know, a better analysis and all that. And to be honest, I think I feel like I did a good job with episode one and two uh, when I was reviewing those, even though I kind of was drifting away a lot of times. And it kind of, you know, I was kind of dragging along and mumbling here and there. But, you know, I, I tried. I really tried my best to actually review these. And I even took mass amounts of notes as if I'm, you know, doing something for an essay. And, like, I just already got done with doing finals. Here I am doing extra finals to actually review these because, you know, I really love the show. And I've been wanting to review Mir Miraculous Ladybug since season two for the longest time. So I haven't had time at all, but this is the time where I do have time and where I do want to talk about it, especially seeing all the episodes time and time again. I really just want to really talk about you know, more Maracas Ladybug. And honestly, uh, I couldn't find anybody in my friend group. Actually, I don't even know what's a friend group. I don't have a lot of friends, but to talk about this show. So yeah, here it is. And hopefully we can discuss in the comments and all that. But I really want to dive deep and actually really, I, I guess, take a different route within this one and talk about like kind of the thesis of you know what this episode is about i mean it's about ladybug's mental state and how she emotionally tries to you know we're starting to see a development through ladybug aka marinette and it seems that time and time again there could be a point where it could be a breaking point where she might you know you know all this emotions and all that might get through her and thankfully, Olio was there. And we're going to talk about it in a minute, which I believe it's already like been spoiled by a lot of people. Like everyone knows the ending. And that's kind of like the biggest kind of, you know, reveal in this episode or the biggest reveal in Ladybug Miraculous in a long time. I mean, I, I feel so good to know that other people could be involved in, you know, not, not just like, you know, Cat Noir and Ladybug. Other people can help them. Other people, you know, they don't need to rely. We, we can actually have a squad, an actual squad. to, And hopefully the gang of secrets being Alex, Alia, um, Julica, and I forget the two others. But yeah, the rest, the, the five of these girls within Marinette, like I picture. I literally pictured when I first saw the trailer of Gang of Secrets, I picture Rena Rouge, I picture Bunnicks, you know, and I, I picture like, especially, um, I think later on in Guild Trip, the, uh, Rose had like her, like Miraculous, I believe, uh, I'm not sure. I think I already spoiled that, but it's already been out there. But yeah, I, I picture a lot of these, you know, having their own Miraculous, you know, a girl group that actually has their own, own Miraculous and it could be mixed within, I don't know, we could see something, uh, also with Cat Noir, uh, with, you know, with Adrian's uh, group of friends, Max and uh, and the uh, and other guy, the the guys, you know, the bros, uh, maybe put Luca in there, and we can have a team as well for the boys that actually has the the miraculous, and it could be all mixed together. And I'm I'm basically making predictions, but it could happen. It could happen. We can have the whole squad, and that's what I really really want to see. In miraculous ladybug yes i'm also in for like you know the the romance concept of it and also in for like the the actions and the reveals and this you know the what, what's going on between like hawk moth like how is he gonna find out of adrian and all that how, you know is all these are gonna be aligned and all that so it, it takes time to really know that where all of this is going you know is heading towards in terms of what are really, you know, the main end goal of all this. But I'm speaking low. <laughs> speaking of the future, I'm speaking of the future of the, the season, and we're only in the beginning, you know. 
So yeah, I just really want to put that out there, knowing that it's going to be more than that. And that's what I'm excited to see in Miraculous Ladybug and other stuff going along with it. So Gang of the Secrets, pretty much at the movie theater, they started off. And it's, it's funny how, um, for, you know, of course, uh, Cat Noir is not really familiar of what uh, Ladybug is going through, of what Marinette is going through in terms of the breakup and all that. And you start to see this like mental like uh, craze going on within her head as she, you know, especially with all of this anger or this all the stress that she's just trying to get out but of course it you couldn't hide it especially from cat noir or at least how i see it because they're at the movie theater literally the same place where luca and marinette actually almost kissed and it got interrupted and all that has come like like pretty much all coming back to haunt her you know i believe a lot of times when you're going through like a breakup and all that i, I think it's best to actually go out of the town and go somewhere else, you know, you know, just to get out of that, you know, mental circles, you know, sometimes when you're in like a place that is very familiar of, you know, what you've seen, you know, uh, at least for me, a lot of times when I'm seeing places that I don't want to be reminded of because of the person actually that impacts that, it's good to actually move out and really, you know, I don't know, take a vacation or something like that. But in this case, you know, we're starting, we're seeing Marinette going through all this and, and it's getting real and it gets personal. So as it moves on, pretty much, uh, the, you know, the, the part where Marinette and Luca almost kiss kind of explains why she's mad. And also you see Cat Noir trying to calm her. But Marinette, uh, you know, tries to, to cover her mental state and a lot of times just sweeps it away and just moves on and just, you know, doesn't have the time to talk about it, which also creates more of a craze of what she's going through later on. Uh, pretty, And also we start to see uh, one of the the I, I guess the designs of the or pretty much the the add-ons i would say for one of the the miraculous of ladybug siren uh our siren ladybug appears as i guess she took a swim just to make it through uh her apartment i guess i don't know how the mapping of that goes you know also i never been to paris so i can't really give you a good in-depth not not to say that you know paris and Mi miraculous paris is same thing you know these are two different things if they were the same thing i'm pretty much sure that you know <laughs> the akumatization would take over the world and to my place here in california but under that yeah we're starting to see how like a lot of of ladybug's mental state is a affecting of what it, she's going through and also especially affecting her daily life of using the powers of course a lot of times when you become familiar it's kind of like driving you know yeah you you know how to drive you know how to really use you know the car or something like i don't even know how to explain anymore i mean i do have a license you know you do know the fam the familiarities of actually just driving and getting to your place and commuting and all that and all parking but sometimes when you're in a certain mental state that kind of affects you and you start to drift a little you start to you know you know uh, break when you shouldn't you know and it becomes kind of dangerous especially how that kind of affects you know i pretty much put that analogy the same way that marinette is using her miraculous and how it the whatever she's going through affects how she use it if you get what i mean and later on <laughs> we start to see how the gang is aware i mean i guess alia is aware and talks about seeing uh you know the relationships that uh alia is i mean that i mean not alia uh the alia seeing the different relationships that marinette is going through and later on notices uh, especially I, I guess later on you know that's when and i'm going by scenes as i'm reading in my notes uh marinette or, I mean, Ladybug notices that, oh, Tiki, <laughs> Tiki hasn't take off yet and just notice. And pretty much we start to see the Kwamis also helped her as well in the beginning uh, when she came in in her room. Uh, but and also tr even removes the pictures. And I like how the Kwamis are, are very helpful. You know, the reason there was also this part where one of the Kwamis, I believe it was, uh, what, what was the, the Fox Kwami? Um, uh, tricks uh, was even helping uh marinette out to escape when the villains were coming in and pretty much i i guess the kwamis would play a big role of helping 
a late bug out in these situations or whatever she's going through even mentally so that's that's a good like you know thing to have especially when you have le- these small you know knowledgeable friends you know and also of course a lot of times being the guardian isn't easy but you know you have people that you know especially these kwamis to to actually i guess make it a little easier and they try to make it a little easier for her when going through this breakup they know what's going on you know but <laughs> i guess uh ladybug did didn't want to listen she said something but of course, uh, notices that forgot to take her, uh, you know, um, miraculous off, you know, spots off basically when, you know, she was still in full, uh, ladybug mode still or ladybug siren mode. And we might see these, uh, breakups take a hold of her, uh, especially, I, I mean, I already read this already, but taking her, you know, in her daily life and immediately turns, uh, back to ladybug. For some reason, because, you know, I guess she was trying to finish something. But then her friends showed up and barged in there, which, you know, a lot of people would actually see this and be like, why Why was she like mad at friends? Well, barging in and also whatever like Laybug is going through it, it is kind of like, you know, like if I was not in a good mood and some of my friends that I'm totally cool with, you know, and I'm talking about friends that if I was cool with, that would come into my room and they would like be like, yo, whoa, yo, man, what's good? Like, I thought we were hanging out and stuff like that. And I'm just like, dude, can you get out? <laughs> what are you doing? Like, get out of here. Like, man, I'm going through something, man. Like, come on. But of course, I would, you know, word it in a different way. Like, get out. <laughs> that would, I would just pretty much say that, and depending on what I'm going through. And I guess that's what we see through Ladybug or what she's going through. And it pretty much explains why she's, you know, takes her temper out of these, out of her friends that were just trying to help her. And we, we, we are reminded that, you know, Laybug is still a teenager. She's still developing and she still is really processing you know, what's really going on. And a lot of things that, you know, she's not used to are kind of new to her. And especially having the, uh, you know, development of being a guardian and having the, you know, uh, maturity of actually having these responsibilities can take a hold of you. And I guess it comes down to a coming of age where she's growing and learning, and but she's not at that point where she's fully developed, if you know what I mean. And it's, I guess, I guess <laughs> pretty much Marinette had no, you know, it was for a good reason because they don't want the friends to find out about the, you know, the miraculous box or that, you know, big ladybug colored box thing i don't know what's it called okay the miraculous box basically uh and you know not they if they found out they would question it and also it would bring a lot of like oh my goodness you're a ladybug you know that kind of reveal and all that and it's not she she's not ready for that so it made sense why you know marinette told her friends to get out you know kind of that deal and i guess marinette kind of took a little too far uh, saying like maybe I don't want France get out and I'm just like okay or something like that and which she <laughs> didn't mean but as the gang almost found out I mean about the miraculous box then I mean come on what, what are you supposed to do I mean it seems like these uh, got deep but I mean it's kind of like whoa okay <laughs> I like how it wasn't like too like too dramatic ties or dramatic dramatic I guess <laughs> I'm trying to say it um but um I, I just like how it, it's on to the point and you you also see Alia's reaction and that kind of affects Marinette as well and you know slowly you know surely the guiltness just comes in and also the the whole group later on got akumatized which yeah of course they would <laughs> and like you know having like one of her you know best be, I mean best friends to you know, somewhat reject them is not an easy thing to go through. And then that just gives a chance for Shadow Moth to actually, you know, kumatize them, all five of them. And they become the Gang of Secrets, I guess that's where the name is. Or the sense of the Gang of Secrets, a kumatized version. Uh, and, and then they just do their own thing, just evading Paris as they usually do. And pretty much later on, Plague uh, identifies the, the Eiffel Tower as as um adrian is watching the news 
And also, it becomes word that, yep, that something's going on. And they, they immediately go to, um, uh, I guess, Marinette's place or something. Just go out there just to stop the villains. And I do like how, and I talked about it before, about how uh, Trix or one of the Kwamis actually helping Marinette. And even though I, I even saw the scene it, as well, can the Kwamis use their own powers? Like, they don't need to have... Um, uh, a guardian or someone that is the miraculous holder, like, you know, Ladybug and Cat Noir to control them. So they can use their own powers? Like, we see Trix using her own powers, the Fox Kwame. And does that mean that, it, like, are we going to see a point where, you know, Naru or Dosu, the, the Kwamis that Shadow Mot uses, might use their own power if they ever put, you know, I mean, of course, like, you know, uh, Naru got pushed too far with from uh, Shadow Moth. But are we going to see a point where we're going to see that? Like, you know, having their own chance out there? Or one of the Kwamis actually, you know, being the wisest to actually save one of the people? Like, I wonder if one of the Kwamis can actually save other people in, the, in just the Kwamis themselves, not the Guardian or anything. Like, if, like... Tiki or uh, Plague just went on a trip out there, like a vacation, would they be on their own to actually protect them? Like, I don't know. It could be something that could happen in a future episode, maybe. But I'm just, you know, speculating and just wondering, like, you know, as well as predicting. But as later on, uh, we start to see Lady Wi-Fi get captured. And uh, Ladybug tries to talk with <laughs> with wi Lady Wi-Fi. At first, when I saw this scene, I was like, okay, this can't happen. Come on now. Like, you know... A lot of times that is not easy to be unakumatized, but we start to see like Ladybug help her. And I already know that a lot of people are already got a reference. Um, I guess it was, what is it? Like, you know, season three of this episode when Chloe was almost akumatized. And then Chloe was like, no, you can't take me. And also the, the butterfly or whatever that akumatized, you know, butterfly is pretty much uh, escapes from her as it, enters but it exits out as chloe basically um rejects the butterfly from being you know akumatizing her which you know I, I don't know if these you know if that counts as that being the first of you know the akumatization but alia basically the akumatized with the help of ladybug but you know i'm still i guess i'm still counting as that scene from of chloe uh, of almost being akumatized and rejecting it, which really still, you know, gets, you know, I still try to see some more of, you know, whatever they're going to do with Chloe and Queen Bee. I'm still waiting for that Soul Crusher episode. But yeah, later on, uh, Alia then becomes uh, Rena Rouge as she is strong enough to get out of that, you know, pretty much. As she is shocked and and she knows, and she, of course, she didn't know that, Mer, you know, I mean, not Mer, uh, Ladybug is the miraculous guardian. And it's pretty much a scoop itself that she has to keep a secret. And yeah, I, I also like just, just, <laughs> I guess that that means Ladybug actually has more power and decision to to find others that could be uh you know miraculous holders themselves which is also a good thing when you hear about ladybug being the you know the guardian and as later on the battle is in motion you know they forgot to get like cat noirs like miraculous uh alex uh becomes dekumatized as in the in that pool scene and slowly i was very worried i almost got anxiety when i saw that scene where cat noir basically you know uh used cataclysm on the bracelet and i'm just like wondering like how did they find out that alex had the bracelet that was akumatized i guess i wasn't paying much attention but i almost i, I couldn't i a lot of times the cat noir kind of scares me with his powers of catal cataclysm literally one touch can even strike you and turn you into dust or something like that or whatever the cataclysm is and that just gives me anxiety sometimes like can you imagine if that if 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 cat noir misses a touch and accidentally touches the hand like that would be terrifying i don't know how if, like that's a scene i don't want okay and i know this is this is you know ladybug miraculous not invincible but if it was invincible or some kind of like 
R-rated superhero show. I don't know. I don't want to see that, but I I know it, it wouldn't happen. But still, it's just like that anxiety. It's like, oh, you know, they probably would picture it in Cat Noir's mind. But my goodness, that that scene, haunting. And I'm I'm sorry if I you know say that. Okay, I don't know what I'm saying. But yeah, everything went back to normal, and we get to later on. We're almost at the part where basically it's in the ending where I want to really talk about, and other people just couldn't stop talking about of you know Alia. And it, it, this is a lot between... I feel like Alia is the winner of this episode. Alia happens to be the best character so far. Like, of what she truly is, and at, as well, how capable she is as such a good friend. And having friends like that is very important, especially with Alia. You know, especially when you're not comfortable with yourself or sharing your secrets. A lot of times you need friends to help you share. You know, my parents and also a lot of people that uh, I'm not comfortable with. I never shared them about my YouTube channel. I never shared them of what I really do and who I am. And also my, you know, my partners as, as well as being, you know, LGBT. I, a lot of times, I, that's why I have my friends to share them. And also I trust them more than my parents or any you know, of that because I don't know what the reaction is if, if they find out and stuff like that. So I kind of relate it in that way. But of course, you know, me being you know, by and also has nothing to do with Ladybug Miraculous being a superhero. That's two different things, I know. But yeah, it's it just seems like, you know, there needs to be someone, there needs to be a helping hand for Ladybug. A lot of times you can't do it by yourself. I guess Ladybug kind of finds out that maybe she she had this mindset where, yeah, I can go to this on myself. I'm capable. I'm independent. But no, you're still young. You're still developing. A lot of times you need other friends to, tr you know, help you out. A helping hand. And thankfully, Alia is there for her. And especially with this scene where it was just like deep and just, you know, one of the kind of like, you know, more so somber kind of like sad scenes. Not sad as in bad, but sad in a way where it's like, man, I, I felt for, for Marinette of what she's going through. She can't handle this. But it's her priorities. It's the responsibility and what she was trained for and what she was capable of, her calling. And a lot of times you need a helping hand. And thankfully, Alia was there to actually hear her out. And I never, ever thought. I really thought at the scene when, you know, uh, Marinette was hugging all of her friends, saying sorry and all that. I thought that was going to be it. But then, then Marinette calls Alia. It's like, Alia, wait. And I'm like, oh, no way. No, it's coming. Like, immediately, I was, like, picturing, like, oh, can you imagine tell her, tell Alia, like, the truth? And she did. And I'm like, what? Huh? Like, whoa, oh, okay, Alia knows. And th this could mean a lot of things. I feel like I wish the other episodes would reference this a little bit, reference how, like, Alia finds out and what really goes on with her mind, like, itself. But the first thought in my head that made me think of something that, was unique about this the fact that ladybug you know revealed to herself in front of alia could only mean that alia could actually be rena rouge whenever she wants i'm talking about being a new holder a third holder could that happen could it happen look i've seen the trailer of soul crush i know for a fact that some other character that happens to be chloe's like cousin all that has the you know late you know <laughs> the, the 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 queen bee miraculous and stuff like that i think i already spoiled that but it's already a trailer of it but still like something like that could we see Something that I've been wanting to see in Ladybug Miraculous for so many years could happen. Could it come in real life where each hero gets to be their own hero? And could we be close enough to actually see this come to light to actually see heroes be independent as they grow up? And the development. I'm just looking forward to the English dub of what this is because I feel like it will be giving more a much more deeper kind of like synopsis of what's really going on. Even though I kind of shared mine. But you know obviously mine is better no, i'm just kidding i don't but yeah i just i i what could this mean for the like the future of like you know especially alia knowing like because the, has she ever told anyone does anyone else know like we know for a fact that future alex know and i'm really hoping that future alex uh time tagger or uh, you know or bunnix time tagger bunnix yeah it's bunnix i'm sorry uh pretty much d doesn't really come back to you know just the race marrying thankfully not Th you know let alia know i be i believe alia has huge trust yeah she runs a, a lady blog yeah she actually has probably a following in the miraculous universe uh that happens to actually 
you know, can tell anyone and pretty much all that. Or maybe betray her in case, like, Alia gets into a ruffle between Ladybug or between Marinette, you know, of course, being the same person. But you you get what I mean. Like, but I still, I feel like I believe Alia, especially how she was betrayed in this episode, how she was trustworthy, how she was a great friend. And I don't know what could be in the future of the next upcoming episodes, but hopefully... This could mean something for each of the upcoming heroes that are coming up in Labor of Miraculous. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you subscribe, like, comment, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys next time. More Miraculous reviews coming soon. A piece. These are hard to review, but I still do it because I love this show. Okay? Miraculous for life. Peace.